Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of Two Hour Cues, episode 9, Supervillain. And our last episode was about an anti-hero theme. And I talked about the contrast between good versus evil and gave several examples of great Marvel and DC superheroes and villains. I talked about a few key scores that I really liked. And I also talked about the middle ground where you need to find that balance to achieve an effective anti-hero theme. That was a fun episode to do. But now it's time to explore a new theme, still within that same superhero world, but this time we're going to explore the supervillain theme. That evil, that bad guy, the ugly. Obviously, this score will be darker, and I chose to make it edgy with heavy guitar elements, but I also added our new damaged drum kit for maximum face melting. It paired really nicely with Damage 2's percussion. And there's a lot of traditional elements anchoring this track alongside of the murky music meets sound design vibe that really help give this track its personality. I wanted to mention that I actually got stuck with the third section, the sort of end build. You know, I was adding this and that and it just wasn't working. So I ended up picking up the guitar, putting down the Damage drum kit, and playing the melody on the guitar and just made it slam as hard as I could and it actually seemed to work pretty well and help conclude the track. You'll hear it. So why don't we take a listen and just get right into it and you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. Let's do it. just me that was fun so let's take a look at I think the best way is to sort of go to the main theme where it all began and if we take a listen to the brass and also crack the tracks open you can see what's going on so here we go <laughs> So there's some interesting root motion going on here. So you've got... That's uh, pretty sinister and evil, so you're seeing that here. And on top...
That's sort of the vibe. With a really brooding low brass. Right there, that hangover. What is that? The B flat. That rub right there with the B flat and the melody and the D in the bass. While I was playing around with that, I was like, oh yeah, that's 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 hitting that sweet spot of like this feels sort of evil, but sort of, you know, in that realm of the new superhero vibe. So on the top, the melody is not that dark. A lot of sort of dissonance that's resolving, but then falling back into this darker tone. And to me, that really spoke like this could work as a supervillain theme. So that's the brass doing it. And that's sort of the main statement. That's sort of where I started with the theme and everything sort of came out of that. If we back up now that we've heard that, to the intro, there's a whole bunch of elements. There's this really heavy synth part that has this really kind of randomness to it. So that's sort of trucking along. And then I use this new synth called the Lyra 8, which is sort of like a drone machine. And these were sort of the beginning elements to complement the theme. And that's setting the stage, this sort of foreboding build. It's like, it's the setup. Um, there's a bunch of other elements that are in part from just more hybrid vibey sounds. Like here's the traditional shimmer strings, which is really just a high, low intro, and then the high part. That's just hanging up there. And then we've got lush strings, which are doing the same. Intro a little vibe here. And then if we start adding in some of these other elements. So there's all this like murk and vibe. And I think it, for me, it sets the scene. You know, it's it feels like dark and sinister, which goes along with building the melody so it works to be like a supervillain or something like that. And all these other parts are sort of the setup. So if we put the synth in and the Lyra 8 drones along with the other sort of soupy stuff. So that's a good amount of the intro picture. I typically write stuff and then I get bored and I end up uh, you know, adding too many parts. Um, it's a common theme and a problem, but you know, we do what we gotta do. So I wanted to introduce the guitars sort of in this, like here it is, it's part of this character and it's along with the drums. And I made the drums from the kit audio and made them wet. So it felt like it was sort of a hint of what's to come. guitars here just chugging away theme answered with a piano theme in the brass So that's sort of the intro, you're setting up the scene, 
the the sort of evil vibe going on. It's like, you know, this is not the good guy. I started to let it go into the next section and we start to pick up the motion. And a good way to do that was with some short strings sort of chugging away. Dun, 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 dun. I shouldn't be singing. Um, and that's where the drum kit really kicks in. Before, it's just kind of playing kick like that. And then there's this fill. So this is what I was talking about in the uh, intro to what we're doing here is this last section. How much bigger can you really get with brass and strings and drums and some rhythm guitar? How do we do this? Someone here may have suggested an idea. I'm not going to say who. They knew who they are. Um, Ari. Anyway, so we brought in some bass guitar, really loud and chunky guitars. So let me solo that. You know, you got to put the drum kit in with it or it just doesn't do it justice. I'm a metalhead. What do you expect? I love that. It's just, it's really heavy and it worked with that progression. You know, it was down in the brass and I picked up one of these really evil, super low tune guitars. It's like low B, you can drop it to a low A and just play. And I was like, that's really satisfying. All right, let me get over myself now. So there's also the melody, which I played, you know, man, I know, over the rhythm motion underneath with the guitars in the bass and then did an octave higher. So let's pick it back up from this break. sort of just over so with the melody I you know I wanted to be expressive and not just play the melody and I was sort of bending into notes which is not the first time I've done that but it made it seem in my opinion a little more unhinged with the melody like big bends and like the melody is sort of like this swaying beast I just made that up but you know what I mean it felt a little disjointed from the rest of the track so after doing this, I was like, let me weave in a few elements, like some brass, some strings, you know, the damaged drums, like damage to, I haven't even shown you what's going on there. This might be a good time. So in the end here, I'll add it in. You'll hear it now. It's the big low toms. It's that vibe. So here we go. So if I just solo the Armageddon drums and the drum kit, you'll see what's going on. There's like seven songs at once here. There's so many tracks. <laughs> Now, without the like damage rock kit or the damage kit, as it were, it still works, but it's just not quite as heavy. So. I love the big, you know, sort of tribal crushing drums and then with the kit in.
it really makes it slam that much more. So let me unsolo so we can hear everything happening in this end section. Again, some like unnerving weird crap going on underneath. So if we back up to the end of sort of section two where the brass is like full on and then there's a break, let's do that. <laughs> Uh, there is this other kind of interesting warped loop playing underneath. What is that? It's just sort of this sound from Symphonic Destruction called Ten Nets of Divergence or something like that. And you can still hear that in the bottom, which is kind of cool. It gives it that sort of soupy intro vibe it's still tying it into the end so here are the strings they're nothing earth shattering they're more of a rhythmic thing so here we go strings go bass guitar or the synth bass Now that's all sort of weaving its crafty web while the brass is screaming. Support of brass underneath. And the strings are still going. And the giant Armageddon 2 kit from Damage 2. A lot of stuff going on. Big, big, big. I'd say it's probably more in the trailer realm than film score soundtrack. But you could say, hey, this, uh, this melody really works. Let's interpret it differently in a film. So let's go from the beginning since we've sort of explored what's going on here and uh, take a listen.
Cool. All right, then. All right, everybody. That's our latest episode of 2 Hour Q's Supervillain. I hope you guys really dug it because I had a lot of fun with this one. You can check out more about Heaviosity at our website, heaviosity.com. And as always, please make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps videos like these reach more people. And thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Everybody, take care, and we'll see you next time. I was born in it. Numeria adopted it.